Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Jim Butcher's Death Masks. This one is book five of the Dresden Files. And today, looks like we're on chapter 13. Anyway, <clears throat> if you haven't read these other uh, books or other chapters, please do look down in the playlists below. Uh, right now, looks like we're about to see what's going to happen with the uh, second denarian that Dresden's going to come up against in 12 hours. Uh, he's kind of sleep deprived, kind of hasn't had a, excuse me, hasn't had a lot of time to rest and recharge and get things going again. So, here we go without further ado. I only saw it coming out of the corner of my eye, and I barely had time to register the movement and lunge as far as I could to one side. The demon went by me in a blur of rustling, metallic whispers, carrying the scent of lake water and dried blood. Neither of the church mice screamed, though whether this was intentional or by product of surprise, I couldn't tell. The demon was more or less human, generally speaking, and disturbingly female. The lines of curvy hips swept down to legs that were oddly hinged, back-jointed like lions. She had skin of metallic green scales, and her arms ended in four-fingered metallic clawed hands, like the demon form of Uracel. She had two sets of eyes, one luminescent green, one glowing cherry red, and a luminescent sigil burned in the center of her forehead. Her hair was long, I mean like 15 feet long, and looked like a demented love child of Medusa and Dr. Octopus. It had seemingly been cut in one-inch strips for half a mile of sheet metal. It writhed around her like a cloud of living serpents, metallic strands thrusting into the walls and the floor of the ship, supporting her weight like a dozen additional limbs. Anna recovered from the surprise first. She already had a gun out and ready, but she hadn't been trained in how to use it in real combat. She pointed the gun more or less at the denarian and emptied it at her in the space of a panicked breath. Since I was a couple of feet behind the demon, I flopped to one side as best I could, stayed low, and prayed to avoid becoming collateral damage. The demon flinched once, maybe taking a hit, before it shrieked and twisted its shoulders and neck. A dozen metallic ribbons of writhing hair lashed across the room. One of them hit the gun itself, and metal shrieked as the demon tendril slashed clean through the gun barrels. Half a dozen more whipped toward Anna's face, but the blonde thief had reflexes fast enough to get her mostly out of the way. A tendril wrapped around Anna's ankle, jerked, and sent the woman sprawling to the floor, while another lashed across her belly like a scalpel, cutting through her jacket and sprinkling the cabin with fine drops of blood. Francesca stared at the thing for a second her eyes huge and surrounded by white. Then she jerked open a drawer in the tiny galley, pulled out a heavy cutting knife, and lunged at the denarian, blade flickering. It bit into the demon's arm and drew a furious shriek that did not sound at all human from her throat. The denarian spun, silvery blood glistening on her scaly skin, and ripped one claw in a sweeping arch. The demon's claws sliced into Francesca's forearm, drawing blood. The knife tumbled to the ground. Francesca cried out and reeled back into one of the walls. The denarian, eyes burning, whipped her head in a circle, the motion boneless, unnerving. Too many tendrils for me to count lanced across the room and slammed into Francesca Garcia's belly, thrusting like knives. She let out a choking gasp and stared down at her wounds as several more tendrils thrust through her. 
They made a thunking sound as they hit the wood wall of the cabin. The demon laughed. It was a quick, breathless, excited laugh. A kind you expect from a nervous teenage girl. Her face twisted into a feral smile, showing a mouthful of metallic, seeming teeth, and both sets of eyes glowed brightly. Francesca whispered, Oh, my Gaston. Then her head bowed, dark hair falling about her face in a veil, and her body relaxed. The demon shivered, and the tendril blades whipped out of her, the last foot or so of each soaked in scarlet. The tendrils lashed about in a sort of mad excitement, and more droplets of blood appeared everywhere. Francesca slumped down to the floor, blood beginning to soak her dress, and fell limply onto her side. Then the denarians, two sets of eyes, turned to me, and a swarm of razor-ed tendrils of her hair came whipping toward me. I had already begun to ready my shield, but when I saw Francesca fall, a surge of fury went coursing through me, filling me from toes to teeth with scarlet rage. The shield came together before me in a quarter dome of blazed crimson energy, and the writhing tendrils slammed against it in a dozen flashes of white light. The denarian shrieked, jerking back, and the attacking tendrils went sailing back across the cabin with their ends scorched and blackened. I looked around wildly for my blasting rod, and it wasn't where Anna had left it when she took it from me. The pepper spray was, though. I grabbed it and faced the denarian in time to see her raise her clawed hand. A shimmer in the air through her fingers threw off a prismatic flash of color. And with a flash of light from the upper set of eyes, the demoness drove her fist at my shield. She hit the shield hard, and she was incredibly strong. The blow drove me back against the wall, and when the heat shimmering of power touched my scarlet shield, it fractured into shards of light that went flying around the cabin like sparks from a campfire. I tried to get to one side, away from the demon's vicious strength, but she snarled and strands of hair punched into the hole on either side of me, caging me. The denarian reached for me with her claws. I shouted a panicked battle cry and gave her the pepper spray full in the face, right into both sets of eyes. The demoness screamed again, twisting her face away, ruining the tendril cage. The human eyes squeezed shut over a sudden flood of tears. The glowing demon eyes did not even blink, and the sweep of the denarian's arm fetched me a backhanded blow that sent me sprawling and made me see stars. I got back to my feet, terrified at the notion of being caught helpless on the ground. The denarian seemed to be able to blow off my magic with a bit of effort, and she was deadly in these confined quarters. I didn't think I could get up the stairs without her tearing me apart, which meant I had to find another way to get the demon away. The denarian swiped a claw hand at her eyes and snarled in mangled, throaty English, You will pay for that! I looked up to see that Anna had dragged herself across the floor to the fallen Francesca and knelt over her, shielding the other woman from the denarian with her body. Her face was white with pain, or shock, or both. But she shot me a glance and then jerked her hand toward the far side of the cabin. I followed her gaze and got her drift. As the denarian recovered and blinked watery, murderous eyes at me, I lunged toward the far side of the room and shouted, Get out of the fridge! They must not have it! The denarian spat out, what it took to be an oath, and I felt that lion-like foot land in the middle of my back, flattening me to the floor, claws digging into my skin. She stepped over me, past me, and her tendrils tore open the real fridge, taking the door almost from its hinges before slithering inside and knocking everything within the floor. 
She hadn't quite finished with the first fridge before her hair had begun to tear open the dummy fridge and dragged out the steel strong box. While the denarian did that, I looked wildly around the cabin and spotted my blasting rod on the floor. I rolled my back, burning with pain, and grabbed the blasting rod. Calling up fire within the tiny cabin was a bad idea. But waiting around for the denarian to murder me with her hairdo was an even worse. She stood up with a strong box just as I began channeling energy into the blasting rod. Its carved runes began to burn with golden radiance, and the tip of the rod suddenly gleamed with a red light and wavered with hot air shimmer. The denarian crouched, demonic limbs too long, feminine-shaped, disturbingly attractive. Red light gleamed on her metallic green scales. Her hair writhed in a hissing mass striking sparks as one edge rasped against the other. Violent lust burned in both sets of eyes for a second, and then she turned away. Her hair tore at the cabin's ceiling apart like paper mache, and using her hair an arm and one leg, she swarmed out of the ship's cabin. I heard a splash as she hit the water, taking the strong box with her. What was that? stammered Anna Valmont, clutching, clutching Francesca's limp form to her. What the bloody hell was that? I didn't drop the blasting rod or look away from the hole in the roof, because I didn't think the denarian was the sort to leave a lot of people alive behind her. The end of the blasting rod was wavering drunkenly. <clears throat> How is she I watched the hole in the ceiling for several shaking breaths until Anna said, her voice barely audible, she's gone. A stabbing feeling went through my belly, sharp and hot. Maybe I'm some kind of Neanderthal for thinking so, but it hurt me. A minute ago, Francesca Garcia had been talking, planning, grieving, breathing, living. She'd been killed by violence and I couldn't stand the thought of things like that happening to a woman. It wouldn't have been any less wrong had it happened to a man, but in my gut, it wasn't the same. Damn it, I whispered. How are you? Can you walk? Before she could answer, the ship lurched and leaned to one side. There was a wrenching, snapping roar and the rushing sound of water. Icy cold ran over my ankles and began to rise. The hulls breached, Anna said. We're taking on water. I headed for the stairway, blasting Rod up to make sure it was clear. Can you get out? Light exploded behind my eyes, and I dropped to my hands and knees at the bottom of the stairway. Anna had slugged me with something. A second burst of light and pain drove my head far from down to splash some cold water against my forehead. I dimly saw Anna's foot kick my blasting rod away from me. Then she picked up the shroud in its package from the counter and tore off a top sheet of the hotel memo pad. I saw that she had blood on her jacket, soaked through, and staining her fatigue pants down to the top of her left leg. She grabbed my coat, wincing, and one of the duffel bags. She put my leather duster on, covered the blood, the water had filled the cabin almost to the tops of her combat boots. I tried to get my wits together, but something was keeping me from doing much besides focusing my eyes. I knew that I needed to leave, but I couldn't get the message to my head, to my arms, to my legs. Anna Velmont stepped past me and went up the stairs. She stopped about halfway up, spat out another curse, and came back down them enough to reach down and splash cold water into my face. The shock jump-started something into my body, and I coughed, my head spinning, and started to move again. I'd been too drunk to stand up a time or two, but even then I'd been more capable than I was at that moment. The blonde thief grabbed my arm and half-hauled me up 
a couple of stairs, her face twisted in pain. I desperately held on to the moment and to the momentum, struggling up another stair even after she stopped pulling. She kept going up the stairs and didn't look back as she said, I'm only doing this because I like your coat, Dresden. Don't come near me again. Then she padded up out of the cabin and disappeared with the shroud. My head had started to throb and swell, but it was clearing rapidly also. But evidently, I wasn't all that bright, even when fully conscious, because I staggered back down into the ship's cabin. Francesca Garcia's corpse had fallen onto its side, glassy eyes staring, mouth slightly open. One of her cheeks had been half covered by water. There were still the tracks of tears on the other one. The water around her was cloudy, brownish, pink. Her stomach heaved at the anger that came, or my stomach heaved with the anger that came with it nearly sent me to the floor again. Instead, I sloshed through the freezing water to the counter. I picked up the cell phone there, the blank memo pad. I hesitated over Francesca. She didn't deserve to have her body swallowed by the lake like a discarded beer bottle. My balance wobbled again. The water had begun to rise more quickly. It covered more my shins already, and I couldn't feel my feet for the cold. I tried to lift her body, but the effort brought a surge of pain to my head, and I almost threw up. I settled the body back down, unable to even curse coherently, and made do with gently closing her eyes with one hand. It was all I could do for her. The police would find her, of course, probably within a few hours. And if I didn't get moving, they'd find me here, too. I couldn't afford to spend a night in the pokey while I was interrogated, charged, and waiting for bail. But what else was new? I'd get in touch with Murphy as soon as I could. I folded my arms against the growing cold, hugged the memo pad and cell phone to my chest, and slogged out of the bloody water in the entranger's cabin and onto the deck. I had to make a sort of jump onto the dock. A couple of people were on the sidewalk above the harbor, staring down. I saw a couple of folks out on the deck of their ships also staring. I ducked my head, thought inconspicuous thoughts, and hurried away before my morning could get any worse. Thank you for chap listening to Chapter 13 of the Dresden Files. Uh, stay tuned for Chapter 14. We're hopefully going to be releasing these on Saturdays. I do want to thank you very much for all the support and uh, apologize for how long it took to get going on these books. Um, but we do actually have... The uh, rest of these books, they're all over here. So, hopefully, we can uh, keep these going and keep these moving. Um, I do want to thank you very much for your support. Um, also, go ahead and check out my uh, wife's new page. We're going to be moving a lot of her stuff over to that. That is on uh, Monica Projects, I think is what she named it. Um, she's going to be doing a bunch of little stuff there. Um, looks like we're going to be moving her exercise, her um, rants, a um, bunch of other little stuff like that that she's going to try and keep up over on that channel. Um, also, if you would please like and support this channel, also check out and like and support that channel. Much appreciation. Thank you very much for all that you do, and you folks have a wonderful day and a blessed day.